And a very good afternoon to all of you. We have resolved the issue itself. So we're going to begin today's session of building your legacy, dollar by dollar, fifth five-part series. I saw some questions uh, asked by some of our viewers. If you missed the first episode, uh, you can approach any prop next salesperson. We do have it archived in our system itself. In fact, we have given out more than 8,000 copies of the book by our CEO, Ismail Gafor and Kelvin Fong itself. So if you have not received your e-copy, do approach any prop next salesperson. They can forward the copy to you. It's complimentary. Just a little bit of a give back to everyone in this, in this time period. So I think my CEO is ready. Welcoming Ismail Gafor. Sir, the show is yours. Hi, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And I'm just uh, quite happy to start today's session. I know leadership is a topic that if you have a choice, maybe it's good sleeping you know, on a good Saturday afternoon because leadership is always known to be stressful. Why do we want to be stressed? And this is a weekend and we have been working and a lot of Zoom training throughout Monday to Friday and we Wow, I think a lot of opinion, a lot of concerns, a lot of stress, but that's the key issue. You see, what am I going to do here is it within the next one hour? I try to make it as far as possible, if possible, even less than an hour. Okay, one of the key things is the last slide that I'm going to show you here is how each and every one of you who are listening can be a better individual, a better leader, and most importantly, can be happier and get more income. Do you want both? That means to say, you are happier and you get more income. That's what we want to achieve. And how is it achieved through being a strong and a good leader? Let me just share some of the, and I did hear some of the questions that was posted. Hey, I missed the first session and I'm going to just start the second part of it. Am I going to miss out a lot? Don't worry. I have done something for those people who have missed uh, the first session and you're just coming in because it's a five part series not to worry and not to fear. And I'm going to have a quick recap. The next five minutes, I'm just going to have a recap and I'm just going to ask each and every one of you to just pay attentive. And those of you who had heard me last week, try to recollect back some of these answers. Okay, that's number one. Number two, I think within the next five minutes, I'm going to ask a simple question where each of you will have to go to the keyboard and lock in. It's just a simple answer between two choices. A or B. It is not A or B. I'm going to reveal it in a very shortly. We will do a poll. Uh, Eddie will do that. And probably within the 30 seconds or a minute, he will read out what is the opinion of all of you who are listening. Okay. So this is something that's going to take place. Why am I showing this definition of myth? Okay. Myth means a widely held but false belief or idea. It means it is not a fact. It is not true. It is a false belief, an idea or story that many people believe, but which is not true. Okay, the main reason why did I come to highlight on this here is because last week, a fair amount of it, we talked about leadership myth. And that's the next slide that I'm going to just recap, recap on part one. For those of you who still remember, okay, what did we talk about? Leaders, it is a myth, must be charismatic, need not. You need not be charismatic. And I'm just going to say that thousands of you have locked in and those of you are listening together in, with partners or as a family with your children. Welcome, thank you so much. Each and every one of you are a true leader yourself. And we have nailed that last week because we also said leaders need not be charismatic. If you're charismatic, good for you. It is really good. But if you're not, you're not among the crowd you are among the crowd of many people who are not charismatic and yet strong leaders. And then we say another myth number two we talked about here is this successful leaders play it safe. Not true. Leaders do take bold actions. I mean, when I say successful leaders play it safe, means some of us may have an opinion. We say, oh, he's really a good leader. He ran up the ladder because... He tends to carry favor for his bosses. He's uh, always a Mr. Nice Man. He tries to just impress people. He don't make tough decisions. He's not firm. He will sway with the wind to win the votes so that he will become a very successful leader at the top. That's a myth. Leaders are sometimes very firm. They live by their values. And that's another myth that we talked about. And we talked about successful leaders share a specific core values. 
Again, it's a myth. It is not true that they have a specific core values. Leaders, they are guided by what they believe. But what we say here is this, core values are sacred cow. Yep, you will not give up your core values in order to achieve success in whatever that you're doing. Okay, next point that we talked about last week was visionary leaders are fun to work with. Okay, so what am I trying to say here is this, we are not saying that visionary leaders are not fun to work. Yes, but they need not necessarily be always be fun. Okay, leaders, uh, uh, leaders can be really, really very fun. Okay, let me just give you an example. Some of you have known me, some of you have not known me. And we set a lot of rules and standards in our company. And I'm going to say some of these things and some of you are going to be really be upset with me. My million apologies, okay? Uh, this is just my opinion. Uh, and some of you are really going to be upset with me what I'm going to share, okay? Why am I going to do that? It's because... I'm just trying to say each and every one of us will be guided by our own core values. And discipline is very, very important to me as one of the core values. And I did mention this in some forums. I'm not so sure whether I shared it in, in the earlier part. As far as i running a company, we have a first parade every Monday of the month, the first Monday or the second Monday of the month. And during the first parade, all salaried staff, and we're talking about 200 over salaried staff, we got 8,500 over sales people, and we read out the late comers. Those who come late, even if he or she is a director of the company or senior manager of the company, we give an allowance of, if you are late about four times, we accept in a month, but if you come late five times and more, and even if you're late by one minute, we will read out the time so-and-so came in on this date at 8.31, one minute late. Why is it so important? And it, you may think that this is insane. Why as a CEO, he read out the latecomer's name? Is it that he don't trust people? No, it is just that I choose to have a specific core value on discipline and I want to emphasize on this thing and that's something that I do. And some of you may have heard and some of you have seen my video uh, just was posted by Mindev because as a CEO, I run the company and for all my salaried staff, twice a year, I have standby cable. And you say, this is insane. Why, who the hell want to work for a company where the CEO conduct a standby cable? But then you must understand, the objective of me conducting a standby cable is not to make life difficult, but is to understand. In fact, I remember the last, or the, one, the earlier one when I did a standby cable, and I realized some of my staff were having a small, like a small tabletop or something like, uh, how do I say, to raise up their uh, computers so that they are more comfortable and their hands are not uh, well rested. And they bought it from some of the online shops. Uh, they say that they bought it at $12. And I realized different people have got different. And then I said, hey, why don't we make it as an standard issue? Or why don't we try to get if those people who want at company level, if this will help. Therefore, I'm trying to say as a leader, when you do certain things, it's for an objective, not to make people's life difficult. So what am I talking about here is this. We were talking about visionary leaders are fun to work with. Why are there certain specific core values, certain rules? So it's okay. So if you're a leader, if you are disciplined, if you have your own ways, we respect that. Okay, that's the point. Okay, visionary leaders make their best moves by brilliant and complex planning. Put it this way. Even if you say um, Jack Ma, founder, Alibaba, billionaire, or for that matter, many successful people. Even my little success, very little success of PropNet, being the largest real estate company and the main board listed. If you ask me, Ismail, was I very brilliant in my thinking and planning that I decided to go and start a company and one day I wanted to be the largest? No, that would be a complete lie. What am I trying to say? It is not about brilliance. It is not about complex planning. It is about doing the right thing every day, that little bit to add value as you grow and as you progress. Okay, so don't need to be so worried. If you think you are not very brilliant and you have not planned, welcome to the world. Not necessarily you have to plan, okay? Successful leaders focus on beating others to prove their ability. Hey, I am number one. 
I am better than him. So talk all the lousy thing or negative thing about them, complain about them to authorities, pull them down so that I feel I am the greatest, I am the mightiest. That's a myth. Believe me, a lot of successful leaders are people who just focus on themselves. People who want to do better every day and improve. Okay, so this is a very brief part that we talked about uh, for an hour on the leadership need and leadership in a crisis management. For those of you who have heard it, please thank you so much for the boredom that I brought you in the last five minutes of repeating some of things. But for those of you who have joined for the first time, at least you have some understanding that I want to make it very clear. All those of you who are listening, welcome on board to this part of the leadership program. Let's move on to the next slide. So what is leadership? Okay, this is something that we can talk about it uh, for as long as possible and so on. And having said that, then what we are looking at here is this. leadership is about motivating people towards a common goal or vision. Okay, it is about motivate, motivating, getting the job done, people being able to listen to you, and then you're a leader. And that is all about leadership. Okay, next question. This is what I'm going to do. So, and uh, Eddie, you can help me. You can put up this, uh, the poll question. I think we can do a poll so that we can get a ground sensing on uh, what do they feel about is leadership born or made. Let me put this out uh, very, very quickly. Okay, so uh, dear participants, I just launched a poll on your screen. Do help me to vote that. What do you think? Leaders are born or they are made? Okay, I see the numbers rising, rising very quickly. Okay, we will just end this poll. We are 20 seconds in. We will stop at the one no, minute no mark. I think we are getting uh, hundreds, hundreds. Thank you so much. It is hugely impressive. Now I've got more than 500 of you uh, have uh, almost coming to reach to the voting. Yep. Uh, good. Some of them might, might still be deciding. I think someone they wanted to vote for both. They are born and made at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, this is a very interesting question, right? Do you think that leaders are born or made? Okay. Um, and um, yeah, I think we have almost come to an end. Fair. Can we maybe just take this and announce it? I, I think, Eddie, I want to know. Can all the other people see the, the percentage of the word or only the host and myself can see? Okay, so I'm going to end the poll right now. Okay, we, we crossed the near the 70% mark. Okay, let me end it now. Sorry for those that are still trying to vote. We just have a gut feel. Let me share the results to everyone. And I, I think everyone can see this. Okay, because this is not a right or wrong question. Maybe we just, I just let Ismail to, to, to anchor this part. We have uh, 87% of those voted that say that leaders are made and then... Uh, the other fourteen percent feels that is born. Okay, thank you so much, Eddie, for helping to conduct this uh, very simple sharing poll and the result. So, what it actually showed here is that almost close to one hundred of the listeners who said that leaders are born, and we have got well above five hundred of you who just uh, went to go and vote and say that no leaders are made. So, at least from here we can see. Uh, almost 80% believe that leaders are made, while about 20% think leaders are born. Fine. So what is the answer? Let us just go and discover a little bit more and how we can really understand this in terms of leadership. Okay. Let me see. Um, oops. Okay. So this is something that what we have understood here is this, and if you look at it from this perspective, um, Behavioral theorists assume that great leaders are made, not born. And leaders are made through teachings and observation. People can learn to become leaders. So I think 80% of you think this way too. And for the 20% of you who think leaders are born, yes, there are some qualities, which is what I'm going to share with the next slide. But I'm just going to welcome all of you, even the hundred of you who think that they are born. Maybe, maybe you are right because you are all the truly leaders. You felt that you're born like one. God bless and you're lucky ones. Having said that, what it says here is this, research has shown, even with some inborn characteristics, 
I mean, let's say someone who's a little bit more extrovert, assertive, or maybe he's intelligent, and as well as he got more empathy. At most, it only contributes one third to an effective leadership, and two third of leadership are still made, which means through the process of learning, through the process of understanding, as well as getting to know a lot more things along the way. So that's the thing. Welcome to the world where all of us are leaders in our own right. And let's discover traits of a successful leader. Actually, if you go and Google and you just, just keen traits of a successful leader, believe me, you are going to get hundreds of it, hundreds, hundreds of traits. Yep. So what is right, what is not right? But what are you going to follow? Actually, as I said, there's no such thing as there's only something specific. But I'm going to identify some that I'm quite comfortable with and for something that some of you can also learn. And probably I may share one or two of my own examples as well along the way. Fine. These are some of the things I've selected. Actually, I think... Uh, 14, let's count leadership. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The word leadership have got 10 letters. If you put it as an acronym, as leadership. And then for some, I've given two uh, words like decision making and determination, resilience and respectful, and as well as integrity, influence, passion, and positivity. Okay, let's just focus for a moment. And as we talk about it, can I just ask humbly each and every one of you, can you just reflect what is the score you will give for each of the traits that I'm talking about? Okay, first and foremost, leadership. Have to lead by example. Next, therefore, the question here is, this, are you a role model? When you insist and demand on other people as a leader, because leaders normally do demand certain things and a certain results, or you want to influence people to get a job done, but do you lead by example? And that's very, very important. Therefore, leaders have to be role model and they have to lead by example. And what about empathy? Okay, what is empathy? Sometimes people get very confused. What is the definition of empathy? Maybe empathy has got to do with sympathy people do think. Okay, but that's not true. Empathy is the ability to identify and understand other people's emotions. That means you have the ability, not just being a nice person, but a mindset that enable you to understand and share the feelings of others. So you are able to go into their world to understand their emotions and being able to react and make them feel good and bring the best out of them. And that's very, very an important quality of any leader. Accountability. Hmm. Very easy word, accountability. Have you been accountable for every actions of yours? And as leaders, we have to be accountable. And there's no two way about it. Okay. One of the key things we talk about here is, is I say for leaders, one of the primary and the key focus always will be decision making. Can you imagine what is expected of a leader? Even in a crisis, in anything and any time, leaders are expected to make decision, decision and decision. The day when a leader don't make decision and decisions just happen that anybody could have made. Let's say, for example, there is a crisis, there is a tsunami. And, and, and if you are going to wait as a leader of that particular village and see the effect of the tsunami and people get drowned and then you say, yeah, tsunami has hit. What leader are you? But if you are a leader, you have the ability to see and you see the signals and you make a decision, get the people to get out of the shore and make move and be safe, you are making decisions. Leaders have to make decisions because if the thing is over and then you come out and say, yeah, let's make this decision when there is, on a hindsight, anybody would have made the decision. Yep. So decision making is of crucial for any leader. Okay. So that's important. Can you imagine a leader who is, don't have enough energy? You see, we already said leaders are people who are supposed to inspire others to move towards a 
vision towards an objective but when you talk you don't have the energy when you want to do something you you just feel like you cool about it and you want to just move along with it i'm not trying to say you have to be loud no i'm not even saying that you have to be charismatic no but you must show your energy your your enthusiasm your positiveness and all other things and that is very important resilience what is resilience this is something a lot of people have been talking about resilience what is it really we are talking about resilience resilience is the ability to recover quickly from anything negative or a disaster the ability to recover it is like a sponge when you squeeze it it will just bounce back you are resilient this person is resilient i'm just going to go to the next slide too because i think resilience is one of the very important qualities in my personal view this is what i'm trying to say what is what is resilience the true grit of a leader is not how he perform the mundane tasks because everybody as i say leaders are born and they are trained and once you train as a leader as a supervisor you keep saying the same thing and doing the same thing no big deal it's a mundane task but how you can roll up your sleeves and produce in a crisis or a tough time like a pandemic like this situation when people are in a crisis how do you get things done and many other situations that you will face so that is a true grit of a leader being resilient but to an extent i must also say resilience come with a fair amount of an experience being able to focus on solutions and not problems you see most of the time we are clouded by problems and then we don't have an answer and that really doesn't help so okay let me just very quickly just finish up the rest of the thing being selfless humility what what is but humility and humility is something it is a quality of having a modest a low view of one's importance that means you are don't think yourself as the most important person without you everybody will crumble and it is the word i i am the leader i am the champion i am the founder i am the creator the word i doesn't really work well humility matters for a leader yep that's really really very important what about integrity all leadership traits is all being about integrity the minute we don't have integrity all said done is over okay passion and positivity i think it is anything that we do energetic and passion is all come okay this is just come but you may have another set of 15 another set of 10 which i have not mentioned is perfectly all right as long as it gives you and sets you in the right direction path happy for you okay so that's what we talk about one of the thing that i have not mentioned other than resilience is communication okay why it is important imagine and take yourself okay i'm just going to go away and then soon i'm going to bring my tempo down and i'm going to share some things that maybe some of you may not have heard because this thing you say mr ismail you have been blabbering for the last 15 minutes who the hell do not know these are textbooks logic on leadership i don't need to spend an hour to webinar to hear you mr ismail i know that yeah fine appreciate that i'll be very conscious about it as i said let me get it out of my way and let me talk other things maybe thought provoking you may choose to disagree and i'm fine if you choose to disagree i respect okay so communication is important the ability to articulate and build empathy with others understanding the emotions of your group and your people is the foundation of effective leadership in today's norm if you think power just because you have the authority just because you are the director just because you are the ceo you tell people to say move get this thing done i don't give a damn i don't care i want to see it on my table tomorrow you slam me you throw it yes people will do if they are desperate for the salary for that month they will still do do they respect you as a leader i'm not so sure will they be there in a crisis to go to a war and a battle with you no because even in good times you lose temper and you throw all thing at them how do they trust you they will not but they will work because they need the money okay so the ability of a leader is empathy and to articulate okay but a, a, a strong a huge dosage of communication includes listening and this is a big problem most of us have even sometimes so even me at times i don't have that patience 
because in my mind, if my mind is rushing because I got 1,000 things sometimes I'm thinking. And if somebody is talking something that I've known, many times I've been repeated story and we tend not to listen. And that is a weakness. So I'm not perfect in this, but I'm just saying, but that is important. Eye contact. How do we look at people as we listen? Okay, and the sincere. Okay, so let me finish. These are all the traits that I want to talk about. Now I'm going to go into certain things that many of you may not agree or may be even thinking that, hey, true or not true? Possible or not possible? This doesn't seem so logical. Okay, let's go into some sparring session now. Hmm, fine. This is my first point that I'm trying to say. As a leader, our mindset should be abundance, like a king. We should always give, give, and give unconditionally. Huh. Luckily, I can't see all the screen. Maybe some of you are already showing some, I do not know, right finger, left finger, what finger, I don't want to comment on it. Somebody said this is a crack. Maybe you disagree, but believe me, in my little journey and my experience, I stand by this, what I say. Leader, our mindset should be abundant. You see, why people like the king? Why people follow the king? Yes, some kings are ruthless because if we don't follow him, he hang you. Yep. But generally, have you noticed why people want to, even, uh, even from the olden days, we are talking about thousand years ago when the king comes out and give an address or the king moves, what does he do? He throw coins, he give food. And what people look at king, king as someone who is a giver, who lives in abundance. That's what I'm trying to say. Can you just imagine if our mindset can be changed to be like a king? Okay, I just want to give a little bit of an example. For those of you who have known me and those of you who have not known me, thank you so much for coming into this five-part series. Put it this way, myself. And I'm just going to share a little story about myself. I won't say I'm the strongest leader. And I dare say that I am made as a leader, not born as a leader, because I was born to an immigrant my dad from India, a very poor family. And I must say, really poor. My father was a news vendor. I was a third child among five brothers, but we have got six siblings. So, went to an ordinary school, finished with my O levels. I'm not going to be shy about it. I repeated my O levels, not that I failed but I didn't do well for my second language and I failed my second language and therefore I couldn't go to my junior college because it was my dream to go to university. And for all you know, the second year I repeated my O levels and my second language, I got F9 for my second language. The first year I got E8. And the requirement then to go to college was minimum D7. Though for the first year for my O-levels, I got two distinctions. I had a distinction for my geography and biology, but I messed up my second language. So what am I trying to say? Who am I? Just an ordinary boy from a neighborhood school with just O-levels, went into the armed forces, just because I choose to believe and learn and I did well, and I got a chance to go to officer cadet school as an O-level boy. And then I moved on and did my A-levels as a private candidate, did my diploma, and then I graduated bachelor in land economics, all on the adult learning. So then the question here is this, how did I learn along the way? It is looking at other people and through the process. And that's why I very strongly believe that leaderships or leaders are made. And I'm one who's made and not born. Yeah, I may agree. Maybe there could have been some 
qualities with, that I was a bit more extrovert, has that little confidence, able to communicate and articulate well, but that didn't give me the skills. I did not go to an overseas university. I did not study at Howard. I no, no, no leadership concept, but it's just that learning along the way and built a company, being in the army, being a battalion commander, being a brigade commander. And how did in the armed forces, you see there's so many scholars, non-scholars. One, Some of them become chief of army. You mean when they were born, they were put on their forehead. He's the chief of army of Singapore because he got military capabilities and leadership. Cannot be. But he or she was exposed to become a platoon commander with a group of 30 people. And he did well and he learned the ropes. And then he became a company commander. While he was a platoon commander, he looked at his company commander, how the company was run. And then as a company, he operated within a battalion. And I did that. And once thereafter, I became a battalion commander. And as a battalion commander, I was successful to I became a brigade second in command before I became a brigade commander. So when I'm a brigade second in command, I'm looking at the brigade commander. And eventually I went to the division of a chief of staff. So how does it work? It's learning along the way. But abundance mindset. Let me come back to these questions of abundance mindset. Put it this way. I'm not being racial. I do not want to say anything, but I'm one who very strongly believe in Singapore meritocracy exists. And I will vouch for this. Why do I say that? As a minority, when I started the real estate business, I started small, just with two-man company. And today we have grown to 8,500. And this is mainly because of the good people who choose to join. And I have a group of people of all faith, of all religion. The Almighty have guided us to grow simply because I had this mindset of abundance. I never fear that at any one of the day when I work with my partners, my partners will overtake me or maybe uh, control the company. And believe me, at the earlier days when I started the company as Propnex, I didn't even have the majority stake when I worked with five different partners. What could have happened? Anything could have happened. People could have easily ousted me that I'm not good enough. But I never fear. Because I only choose to, choose to have a mindset of abundance. I said, I will give and I give and I don't expect. Okay, then you're still not convinced. Hey, this is really, I don't agree. How can human being be unconditional? Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Let's move on to the next slide. I said that. Let's stop provoking. Next one. Okay, think about this. Think about this a little bit. Okay, leaders, what are we talking about here now? We are talking about a leader who feels unsatisfied, incomplete, or victimized, cannot give unconditional love to his family, to his partners, and to his people. Believe me, my friends, if you think a little bit deeper, if you're a manager, if you're a head of a family, even as a father, as a mother, whoever you are, as long as you feel unsatisfied or you feel you're a victim because people bully you, abuse you, and you're not happy deep in you, how then are you going to be unconditional? You'll never be a happy person. So a leader has to be happy. Okay, let's move on to one more point. Hmm. How many of you agree to this? I think if we start doing a poll for every of these things, probably it will be very interesting to know. But never mind. Look at this. Leaders should not be expecting benefits or return every time we give. And I just want you to have this in mind. Even in a family of, among siblings, among parents and as well as children, if every time we expect benefits or return, Every time we give, we will be in a trap situation of being conditional. That means as a leader, we only do something because in return we want. And such leadership. Yeah, you're a leader, but you're only at that level. This is what I'm going to say. At the end of the slide, I'm going to show you one of my own concept as far as where do you want to be? So do you want to be conditional or unconditional? Okay. So I said leaders should not be expecting. 
So believe me, my friends. Then you say that, hey, 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 I don't agree, Mr. Ismail. This one doesn't make sense. How can it be? I, as a leader, you mean so unconditional? That means I don't demand, I don't set target. No, I'm not saying that. In Propnex, we pushed people to get new breakthroughs. We set high targets. Then you say, hey, 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 how come now you're talking about setting targets and so on? And then you say being unconditional. So you're setting so many conditions. So you are contradicting. You're not clear, Mr. Ismail. That's what, that cannot be. Leaders have to be conditional. Okay, fine. This is where I'm going to explain a little bit more on this concept. People who are conditional normally don't have a big heart. Because everything is measured by what's there for me. That is the first thought. People who are unconditional are people who think, let me get that job done. Let me make a difference in the life of others and whoever who is under me so that he or she, he or she that I trust can contribute more effectively. Okay. So the question that I said, when I set targets and KPI, let me tell you what it means. If any of my leader, if any of my manager fail in the KPI, it is not the manager leader's problem. It is my problem. Then I ask a simple question. If I appointed him as a leader to take charge of a particular task, and if that task failed, then I ask a question, why am I not even aware that this task is not being able to be carried out? What were the problems? Did I have the empathy to understand him? Did I connect with him? Did I give him the necessary guidance? It's so easy to point finger. But I think you have to own it. Okay, so this is something again, another thought provoking. People may agree, people may not agree. Let's, let's, let's find it. Okay. Sorry, I went on one bull this already. Next slide. Yep. Ah, this is something that we already mentioned as part of the, the trade. Leaders who do not make decisions and let the situation pass are not effective leaders. You must always remember. I mean, for those of you, and I'm not talking about property, there's these simple jargons that people used to say. When you buy a property, the three things, three most important things, they say, is about location, location, location. I think it is today, I think it's more than that. Lah. I mean, there's such a thing as entry price and all other things. But having said that, people so easily say in any property investment is location, location, location. Then I just simply ask you a question. If you are a leader, if you don't make decision, 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 leaders are expected to make decision, good or bad, right or wrong. With that little information that you have, you process in your CPU, your brain, and you have to make a decision. If you don't make a decision, how will the rest of them know whether to turn right or turn left or to move forward or to do what in a crisis or to what, what you must do? So it's about decisions. So leadership is hugely about making decisions. So don't fear making decisions, my friend. Sometimes the decisions can be wrong. Then you learn from it. But don't come and tell me you make 10 decisions, 8 decisions are mistake. And then you say, hey, Mr. Ismail, I'm learning a lot, you know. I make 8 wrong decisions. Fine. But I hope the next 10 decisions you make, at least the number of mistakes that you make is 5 and not another 8. That means forever you always make 8 wrong decisions, then something is really not right. I'm really worried for you. Not only worried for you, the people under you will, will not have the confidence in you. Okay, so this is about something about making decisions. Let's look at this. Hmm. How do we make decisions? Okay, this is a million dollar question. And I'm going to share a little bit of a story of myself. Believe me, and I, this is really an honest opinion of myself, at times when decisions are made, it may not be popular. Really. However, as leaders, we are guided by our core values. And we must be impartial at all times not clouded by emotions. The problem, the fall of most leaders is ego. When we are quite egoistic about ourselves and we are clouded by emotions and become impartial, it's very tough. And I'm telling you, let me just give you a glimpse of it. Please, my humble request. I'm not saying this to just say, talk big about me. My achievement is really small. I promise you, it's really small. 
to whatever people, many leaders all over the world, even in Singapore, who have achieved. One of the person I admired most was our founding father of the modern era, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, for the sacrifices that he has done at his early age of 30 plus to be a leader of Singapore when during communism time, trying to bring democracy on his own rights, having to split with Malaysia. And today we call Singapore a country of huge success in my view. Yeah, people do disagree to certain areas of democracy, freedom of speech. I don't want to talk about all those things. But I, all I'm trying to say here is this, guided by our core values. Okay, so how do I make a decision? You see, when I run a company, and just for some of you, you know, I've got a few decisions to make. Propnext Reality got 8,500 salespeople. Propnext Indonesia got 1,000 over people. Propnext Malaysia, 600 people. Prop next Vietnam, about 200 people. So these are 10,000 agents and their livelihood a decision. We have Life Mastery Academy, which is in a training arm. We have Prop next Property Management, which is an MCST condo management, a suite of group of people. I've got Sync Capital that helps people in terms of the mortgages and all other things, financial advisory planning and so on. It is another company by itself. Why am I trying to highlight this? Not about... And then I was serving the army. I just stepped down of the army last year, March. After I turned 55, I said, good, I, I have it's time for me to give to the younger generation. And I was still doing in some contribution to some form of a charitable organization, Mandaki, or for that matter, a, a lifelong learning institute, and a committee member, council member. And I just asked a question. How do I make decisions? Every time there's a crisis, oh, okay, this agent uh, uh, didn't do things right, didn't follow the rules, or there was this crisis at these condominiums where uh, we are managing it and there was something that happened. How do we consistently make a decision? Simple. You just need to be guided by your core values. And as far as I'm concerned, the four cardinal pillars that I want to make a decision here is this. every decision I make does not go against the core values. And what is the core value? First and foremost, the four core values are continuous improvement in everything I do. So whatever I do, I should not halt progress. I cannot make a decision to say, okay, go ahead, do this, that, take back. I cannot. It must be continuous improvement. Number two, then we talk about autonomy and entrepreneurship is a core value that I embrace. That means whatever I do, I cannot go and not trust the person, my manager, and take away his powers. I must let it run autonomous but I must guide him and I want my people to be entrepreneur. Therefore, I cannot as a person make a decision or a policy in my company that goes against autonomy and entrepreneurship. Then R, respect and concern for every individual. So I cannot shout, I cannot scream, I cannot throw the book, even if the whole world come crushing, what can I do? I have to respect and concern. And this is something is cardinal. And finally, integrity, ethics, and honesty in everything that we want to do. So these are the core values. So once you have your own core values, I know there is a traits of, traits is different. Huh? Traits, just now we talk about leadership traits. There are 15, uh, what do you want? You're determined, you're passionate, you're energetic, you're empathy, you're humility, and you got led by example. These are traits. Now I'm talking about core values. What is your core value? What is your principle? What do you leave by it that you will not compromise? And your decisions are guided by your core values. If he's a crook, he will make decisions that is in a crook mindset because that is his core values. If you're a person, so this is the one of the most important things. Maybe if you've got a little bit more time, the next part of the session, we can touch a little bit about core values and that's equally important. Okay, next point. Let's move on to the next, next, next thing here is this. Hmm. What does it say? Leaders, when grooming others, should empower people and trust them, okay? And mistakes do happen. Take responsibilities and guide them to learn from it. And this is a, like a very simple thing. I say Everybody say that, but nobody actually follow. People are so ready to jump into it, to point finger, to say, hey, when a mistake is done, you be responsible. But I think one of the key things here is this one of the greatest success of PropNext today. I must say here is this, we have got so many leaders, huge number of leaders. Honestly, Ismail is easily dispensable. 
whether Ismail exists or don't exist, Propnex will move in its right direction. Because one of the things that I always used to tell people here is this, maybe hear me when I say this. Leadership is not like running a marathon because a marathon has got an end point. If you think you're a good leader in your organization and you think you're running the marathon, I want you to change your mindset. To me, an effective leader is one who runs a relay with no ending. That means you keep running and pass the baton to the next person. And as an effective leader, you know when to step aside and let the next generation take on the baton and run faster than you because they are better than you. They have got greater technology breakthrough. And that's why every time there's a new world record. Why? People tend to be faster and better. So who's an effective leader? Effective leader is one who trusts others and who knows when to step aside. Not about holding on to power. Okay? So this is something is I think is close to my heart as well. So it is, as I said, running a relay. Let's move on to the rest. What does this say? Visionary leaders are able to see through little details to understand the big picture of the future. Yeah, for example, when the pandemic starts, I think, I think, I mean, even for Propnex, Propnex, we came up with our resilience package to help the self-employed, and then we come up with certain plan. Even immediately, the first week of the circuit breaker, we straight away started with a webinars series. Built to leadership is only one series. We brought in doctors to come and talk. We talked about consumer seminar. We started so many things. Therefore, we didn't see the crisis, but we saw the crisis as an opportunity where people are at home. And this is a good time to educate people and be unconditional, give them. And it is not say that whoever who listened to us, as the host Eddie said, we have given out 8,000 e-books on um, the timeless gift. And this is the book. This was one of the topics that I talked about about four weeks ago or a month ago. And about 8,000 of it, including Calvin Fong, who wrote a book on the real estate, also e-book. Why are we giving? And I think all these things, probably we can sell at Amazon or any other places where you can collect $5 US dollars. And can you imagine 10,000 times 5 US dollars or $10? Oh, you make 100. Well, what money matters? How much you want to make? There's a limit to it. But it is about really wanting to give and being unconditional. And this is what I'm trying to say. Visionary leaders are able to see through the little details, understanding this pandemic, understanding these challenges, being resilient enough to overcome the crisis and give to people unconditionally so that in time to come, people who learn from this thing may need your services. So be it. Is it conditional? No. But if they come, good. If they choose not to come, fine. We are happy for them. Okay, that's the way you should look at it. Okay. One of the key things, my friends, this is important. Believe me, believe me, believe me. You like or you don't like, you don't have much alternative as far as this is concerned. And I'm very, very sure about it. Okay. Only when I admit that I am responsible, Isma is responsible, who you are, you are responsible for the mess I created, then only things will fall in place. It's so easy to point the finger to say that this problem is because of, yep, my wife don't understand me at all. That's why it's the problem. Yep. This problem here is because all the people working under me are morons. They are not at my level. Yep. So my financial situation is like this. It's simply because, oh yeah, because the cost of living, my payment is not there. I'm not earning right. Yeah. So you can blame everyone, the world, the government, people around you, even God, you can blame. But I'm just telling you, my friends, only when you admit, and in my case, I'm saying only when I admit I am responsible for the mess I created, whatever it is, be it in a relationship in your family, be it in your financial status that you are right now, be it in whatever job appointment that you are, the, the, your groupings in your company or in your team that is not working, as long as you're pointing finger at someone else 
and saying that they are creating all the problem for you, huh, I don't think there's an easy way you can get out of it. Okay? So my message is simple. Yep. Take responsibility. Hmm. What is this? Easy to say. Leaders should always give positive energy at all times, at all times, and never be surrounded by negativity. I think I was, somebody was asking me a question. Hey, um, I, in fact, they said, it. boss, I hear you when you shared these things last week. And I wanted to, I, I was just thinking, but I think my manager, my upline, my leader is not so positive. So what should I do? You say that they should never be surrounded by negative, but my immediate upline is negative. Okay, then I ask you a question. Who owe you happiness? Is it your manager? Your manager has got your own family and you've got his own children, you have to go. You go and find your happiness. You be surrounded by positivity. Yeah. So I think it is important for you to be able to shut off and to see and focus where you want to go. And that's really important. Hmm. Okay, from positivity, it comes to successful leaders of those who know how to be happy at all times, at all times, regardless of any challenges they face. And that's really important, I must say, uh, because if you're not happy, they, you can't do many things positively. And leaders have to be happy. Yep. If you carry in a dark spot, it is going to just pull you down. It is going to weigh you down. You're going to carry the burdens of other people. You know, earlier slide that I mentioned, if you feel victimized, if you feel that you are unsatisfied, you feel that you're lack of full love, you are looking for love, you're looking for recognitions. Hey, my, my superior is not recognizing me. They are not loving me. You're looking for love all around. My goodness, you will never be happy. And then you're not happy. You're not going to motivate someone else to be happy too because you're not a happy person. Okay, so let's start now. Let us behave like a king. Let us think we are a king. Live life with abundance and continue to give, give and give. Yeah, somebody is saying that. Yeah, you can say all these things, Mr. Small. You made it. Let me tell you, my friends, I did not made it. I follow the journey because I was willing to give along the way. And that's what I'm sharing. And I'm really telling you, all of us can achieve more, earn more, be happier as long as we live unconditional. So in a nutshell, this is almost coming to an end. I know it's already an hour. Just bear with me five minutes. I'm going to wrap this up very, very quickly. And I'm going to show you one last powerful slide. After this one last powerful slide. Think about this. The ultimate, the ultimate power of a leader is to let go. Let go of what? Let go. It's okay. Yep. When you cling to things, when you want to achieve, then you have expectations. Expectations bring you disappointment. Let it go. Yep. When I say let go, means not that you let go, you botch up, you curse people, let people die. No. Accept. If it really does not work, don't force it through. Go back to the drawing board. Take a pause and a moment. Ask for divine guidance. Let go. Okay. So I think you need a little bit more deeper into this thinking. But this is something. And this is something that what I asked you to wait. Okay, good. Let's see. Let's see. What does this, this thing say? <laughs> All I want to say here is this, where are you now? As I'm asking you, this is just something that I just came out with this one little concept, right or wrong, is you can disagree with me. Uh, therefore, I cannot say the source. The source is not, say, Howard uh, research or what. It's just as Mr. Ismail's simple explanation. In life, we have got a choice. Either we are an average leader, or you are a good leader, or you are an outstanding leader, is your choice. And put it this way, and let me tell you an average leader. An average leader is one who works very, very hard, who goes up first thing in the morning and even at 7 p.m. he cannot finish work. He always will be thinking and he come back, he will be so tired, he will be physically exhausted. 
very stressed so much so he even lacks drive he's been scolded sometimes he's been summoned to come to the room of his superior and superior say what the hell is this work and he also don't trust his downline because when he asks somebody to do work and that person do not do the right thing and then he gets scolding from his up superior and he always feel he's sacrificing because he's burdening everything because people under him are not working people upstairs are not understanding about him he is the person and he is a leader so is he happy he is not happy and what does he do most of the thing or everything he do is all conditional and you, you look at it the extreme right side my friends what is his life is all about not much compensation he don't get, he don't earn a lot he's in the middle management yeah you you have a big title manager sometimes senior manager or it could be senior executive but the point here is this you work so hard so much but because you keep a lot of thing conditional but let me tell you even there i'm not saying that every one of you are like that eh? so please um, please correct me and i'm just saying that people who remain here forever are those people but every one of us go through this process of the lower tier who i'm just trying to say who can quickly move up the ladder to the center okay i mean to become a good leader ha ah, yes they also work very hard they are sometimes stress they generally trust people but sometimes they are conditional they still their heart is conditional but okay as a directors or senior management they are well paid they decent enough they drive a nice car they do have a private property maybe a condo but all i am trying to say here is this my friend i want each and every one of you the thousand of you plus your loved one your children whoever was listening hey let us be outstanding leader what is an outstanding leader he is one who is working happy even though he work hard i'm not saying that outstanding leader don't work you know every day at home resting and drinking and no 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 he is happy that's the most important because he works at ease he is not stressed he is not taking medication he is not quarreling he is not cursing everybody but he's happy and he does it in an unconditional manner so only when you are unconditional then you climb up the ladder from quickly i don't want you to be stuck as an average leader i want you to move up the ladder from average to become a good from a good to become an outstanding and and actually it's not so difficult you know it's just that for you to have those leadership traits that we talk about the empathy the the resilience the determination and you just follow that slide and then you look at it where you are and you quickly move up the ladder and hey you will be a chief marketing officer you will be a market, marketing director you are managing director coo cfo ceo or even business owners founders doesn't matter you see one more thing and some of you are listening hey 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 i am as i am an owner of the company but i don't agree with you mr smart i am the owner i am the ceo but i am always stressed then i'm just telling you yes so you are only a good leader that's why maybe you are not growing the company to be the number one in singapore maybe you deserve to bring the company to the next level therefore all i'm trying to say is move up the ladder fast be unconditional okay so therefore i'm not trying to say the minute you are a ceo or cfo automatically you are outstanding leader there will be a cmo or cfo or coo or even a ceo or a founder who's an um, average leader just because you started a company doesn't mean you become outstanding just because you are a business owner no i am trying to say here is this every one of us go through the path and if you want to be outstanding you want to earn a lot of money how can you earn a lot of money when people follow you people trust you people believe you people know you are a person that will make a difference in my life and i follow you and that's why you deserve to earn more that's why you are the head of a particular department and that could only happen when you have the right leadership traits and as well as loving people always unconditional i repeat again unconditional okay so as i said before i end this is one of the important slides i want to say here this if you like today's slides for those of you who wanted my slides that i've just been talked about i've been talking for exactly an hour because now it's already 405 you just scan this qr code and join as a propnex privilege member okay and it is free 
And what is the benefit of you becoming a Propnex Privilege member? You will get free regular property news, or sometimes inv invitations to webinars, some consumer event like this, some medical talk, or some real estate talk, or some leadership talk. You will get invitation because we do that. We decide to do that not only during this circuit breaker on a very long time process. And if you are interested to get the slides, you can just scan this QR code and be a Propnex Privilege member. This is one thing that definitely you can do that. Next thing here is this. Like us and follow us in our Propnex Facebook. And why am I just trying to say that you can stay connected with a community of a Singaporean brand, Singapore company, and we, as far as you want to know anything about property matters, property launches, market, because at the end of the day, you like or you don't like, it is good to always take a positive step and understanding about your property. So it's good for you to just follow us on our Facebook. We put a huge number of videos, updates, and things like that, and so on. Yeah, I know, obviously, for the millennials, I know if you don't like the Facebook, maybe you don't even have a Facebook account, you can always be part of our IG, okay? So we do put in a fair amount of on the updates and things like that and so on in our Instagram. So with that, what am I going to say here is this. Next week, hmm, if you have enjoyed my part one and part two, and I'm just stepping up, the next part here is this. I'm going to talk about leaders are source of light. So we talk about earlier part, the myth, part one was myth. Then part two is the leadership traits. And part three, we are going to talk about leaders are source of light. So how do you bring that light within you to attract more people to listen to you, follow you, and to be more effective, to be a happier person, and to climb up the success ladder? And that's something that I'm going to share with you. I'll bring a little bit more of my personal journey and example. And from part three onwards will be where I will be start to be telling my journey story, part three, part four, part five, as we conclude building your legacy by the fifth part. So with that, I've come to the end. Thank you so much for the thousand over of you who have been hearing me, listening to me. And uh, maybe can I just ask uh, Eddie, the host, if there are any popular questions people are asking, one or two questions we can take uh, before we wrap up the session. Okay, thank you for today's session. I think there's a question coming in it's because you show about the progression, climbing up the ladder. So from middle management to the top level itself, what is the effort that one has to put in? Will there be a definite return or sometimes there's people that put in the effort and get back nothing at all? Okay, fine. Very good. Okay. Yes, I really appreciate it and I like the question. Therefore, if you look at all the slides earlier, if anyone who start with the mindset, how much effort must I do? If I do so much of the effort, will I be recognized? And will I go up? Will I not go up? Can you see the mental mind model? It all starts with being conditional and chances are it's going to be tough because when you are conditional, that's why in my next part, I'm going to share a huge amount of this process of how do we look at ourselves. So when you are conditional, chances are you are not going to give 110%. Even if you give, the energy that you emit out will be seen differently. Or sometimes it is going to be tough. Okay, the next point I'm going to say here is this. How much effort? Believe me. I used to share this, you know. Let's say just an officer cadet school uh, for those young person or for those people who have gone to the army, officer cadet school. If you ask me a platoon of, let's say, 40 cadets, the number one cadet in that platoon and the average cadet and the guy who failed and they don't get in a commission, the effort, people think, oh, my goodness, if I want to be the number one cadet, I must make 300% more effort. The honest truth is no. And the guy who failed, and the guy who passed, the last guy, the 39th guy who passed as an officer cadet, and the 40th guy who failed, the difference between these two people, it could only be 1% effort. The 1% effort between a failure and the guy who passed here is this. He may have a very easy attitude. He may have been a bit forgetful. He may not have shown the interest or he may have slipped something and therefore he failed. And therefore, the guy who passed 39 and the, the guy who failed, very little difference. Then I look at it, the number one cadet in that platoon who got a trophy as a number one versus the guy who's number 10 if you say that, wow, he's number one, so he must have had put double more effort. Actually, not true. The guy who won came in number, some of you may be 
smiling and say, oh, yeah, la, the number one know how to apple polish, carry the right boss. And that's no, 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 no. Maybe one in a hundred. I don't want to comment about that. But I'm just talking about the difference between for a middle to going up is someone who's prepared to be accountable, to be responsible and unconditional. And he will, his energy emit out. The key management will look at him or her as an asset to the organization. If that organization don't see this good person as an asset, it is a loss to the organization. And if this person, if truly he is built like that, wherever he go, he will climb up to the top because it is in him, his core values. I mean, that's the way I look at it. Thank you. Yes, thank pass you. On back, Eddie. Yep. So, so the next question will be in making difficult. I know that the decision is hard to make. How do you know that it's the right one at the end of the day? Hmm. Okay. A little bit of experience do make, but I think if you're guided by the right core values, and if you don't become too emotional, and if you're calm enough, and nobody can guarantee you 10 decisions that you make all 10 are right. And there's never a right answer because how do you make a decision? You only make decision surrounded by positive people giving you the right information from the ground and you're processing it as a leader with your ability to empathize, understanding the ground feeling and the market condition and so on. And as a leader, you dare to make the decision a gut feel. And that's why experience helps you Every time when you make it, and again, experience guided by what are you? If your heart, if your values are guided by for the love of your people, and you want to make any, any decision, not at self-centered, but for the goodness of the community, goodness of your people, believe me, nine out of 10, it will be right decision. Because your instinct, your heart, and your values are all in sync for the good reason. And the almighty will guide you through as well. Only when you are totally lost, you are not even having a right core values, you are not guided, and you're trying to grab any whatever this, and you make a decision as and when you like your whims and fancies and to your, your emotions and ego, yeah, then you make 10, maybe five will be wrong. Yes, Eddie. Okay, I think we are coming to the final question for today. Because making decision is always hard and most of the time stress are from the people around us, especially from family. So I think people are asking is that, how do you overcome this, this barrier of the stress from family? Because you talk about unconditional love, but sometimes we are also affected, especially from the one closest to us. Yes, it's true. I used to say this, I can run a brigade, 4,000 people. I can be chief of staff of a division, 20,000 people. I can run a company with 8,500 people. But it's never easy to be the head of a family together with your wife and managing three children. It's not easy because it takes more. That's why family matters. It is really not easy. The only way here is to make time. One of the biggest challenge I have to Sometimes you've got too many responsibilities in our mind. We are clouded. We don't make time. The same unconditional thing that we give in our business to all others, sometimes we, are, we don't make even time for the family. And that, that's where the stress comes. So what's important here is this. First, make time. And this circuit breaker is one really good time. And for all the bad negative things have happened during the circuit breaker, quietly I'm so thankful to the Almighty to give my family the best bonding I never had in the last 20 years. Never, never. You know, in the last 20 years, Propnex is today, this year, 15 July will be our 20th anniversary. We were building the company at such a pace that I was so focused. Yes, I did make time, I did have holidays, but I was never as closely connected with my children as in the last 30 days. So. It's a very tough question, Eddie. Yes, it's true. Just make a little bit more, little time. Let go. Say sorry. You're always not right. Have a listening ear and just give them a hug. Let it be. Things will fall in place. Yeah. Just love will conquer everything. Yep. 
Thank you. Thank you. Also, a little bit of TikTok with your children also helps as well. Yeah, it's true. It's really true. Yep. So having said all, yeah, what I'm going to do here is two things I would like to just uh, emphasize. Next Tuesday, I think they, uh, I forgot to put a slide. Next Tuesday, 8 p.m., Calvin Fong and myself, this has got nothing to do with leadership. For the first time, both of us are going to share. Okay, yeah, good. Thanks for Eddie for putting it. In. Calvin Fong and myself, we will be having an in conversation of the real estate industry. This is the first time where you can speak to your salesperson or you can get the link and you can even put your questions. What do you want to clarify or ask about real estate? If, whether you are a public housing, whether EC, either you want to buy second property, should you not buy, should you stay, what is the market, anything on real estate. Both of us, this is the first time both of us, usually he will anchor and I will anchor, we are all on our own. But this time both of us decided to come together next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's definitely going to be very exciting. Uh, try to lock in, get the passwords from your agents and come in and you will really be uh, be glad to know a lot more from other people's concerns. So this is something that is really good. Uh, I wanted to come. And next, okay, for those of you who has already been there for part one, part two, don't, don't get tired and say that I know. Maybe you'll be able to pick up as you go on part three, part four, and part five. All I wish here is this, at the end of the day, after the circuit breaker, if you all can become a better leader and a good leader or good individual and making a difference in the life of others and ourselves, that's the best gift that we can give ourselves. Thank you so much. Have a pleasant week today and a good weekend tomorrow. And we'll see you all soon next Saturday. God bless. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being with us. Wish you all a blessed weekend. Happy Mother's Day in advance. See you tomorrow. We are not seeing you tomorrow. Enjoy your family day. Okay, see you Monday, Tuesday. Be with us in this uh, first industry session. Send us all your questions. We really want to know what's the burning question you have so that we can feel the ground and add more value to you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.